Uh, I've just been given the go ahead, so uh, we're probably going to start now, guys. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, today's uh, live coaching um, in conjunction with both Tradimo.com and FX Street. Um, as we're going to start with the uh, standard risk disclaimer, and then we're going to talk about what we're going to do today. So, spread bed and FX and CFD trading carry a high level of risk for capital and can result in losses that may exceed the initial deposit. You train with these products may not be suitable for everyone, so please ensure that you understand all of the risks associated with trading. The information and comments provided here in under no circumstance are to be considered an offer or solicitation to invest, and all information provided is believed to be accurate at the time of production. As well as this, guys, nothing herein should be construed as investment advice. Information provided within this room is the personal opinion of the moderator and not Podemo. This content, therefore, does not constitute financial investment or tax advice from FEMO and FX Street, except no liability for the content of or comments made during the session. So now the boring stuff's out of the way, guys. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to be focusing on moving average tunnel in today, guys. Um, another one of these technical um, concepts that we can actually use in trading. How many of you guys have ever used moving average tunnel in before? Just out of interest, has anyone ever used this before? What about you, FX Boyke? Maha, Juan, Lalit, Ted, Tommy, Milan. Nice to see you, Milan, again. Uh, well, it's a fairly simple concept, guys. Um, it's basically uh, using three moving averages. However, again, discretionary use of this um, generally works quite well for me. It's something that we use um, when we talk about um, when we talk about um, discretion and we talk about trending markets. It's something that's very, very important for us. So um, we're going to start by. Oh, just start a little bit further than we meant to. We're going to start obviously on the home slide. So moving average tunneling strategy, something we can use. It can also be used though, guys, just for trade management for those of you who may have other ways of entering into trades. And the basic concept is very, very simple, guys. It's very much something for beginners and intermediates to really get to grip for the market. And it can work very effective. As I've said, you know, it employs a, a three moving average. I do like to use other indicators on the chart. Again, everyone who knows uh, from my prior coaching know that I use volume. Now, FX volume can be very difficult to get to grips with, but actually the volume that you have on a number of different brokers using MetaTrader is representative of sort of the market moves that you get. Generally, you will see spikes in volume when it comes up. I like to use an average true range. I like to use an RSI because I like to see how sort of volatile a market is and how overbought or oversold one is. Um, so... On the time frame itself, we're going to talk about that in a second, um, Lalit. But basically, it's um, a case of being able to use it for um, sort of, I, I use it predominantly on half hour time frame, but you can use it on anywhere from, you know, the, the one minute chart to sort of the daily time frame. It really does depend on, on what really suits you yourself. Now, as I've said, it's a trading strategy itself, a very basic trading strategy, which is why um, I employ lots of discretionary things when I um, actually use it. And generally, it's good for, as I say, for trending markets. Um, it's ideal as a support tool. You can actually use these moving averages to help you decide whether you're going to hold a trade, whether you're going to maybe um, add to a trade potentially, you know, when we pull back to, to enter into a trade. Um, you can use it for determining your market direction. Obviously, we know moving averages are lagging. Um, indicator but when we break out of sort of a range and we can see we have a little bit of a range here we break out from you know as we begin to move away from that moving average we can tell that we're in a very strong uptrend okay it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that we can see that the APR moves up with it we can see the RSI sort of begins to spike as well so basically um, it's it's used for a number of methods and as I've said guys it should be used only um, really in an established trend. Now, you can actually read a movement based on a prior breakout, okay, but you should never enter into a tunneling um, sort of trade until a trend has been established. And the good thing about this is with moving average, we haven't got to worry too much about it, guys, because a moving average is a lagging indicator. And generally, the trend will establish in its bare form before, okay, um, we get the signal to trade. So that's another reason why, you know, it's it's quite good for establishing an existing trend potentially. So and we just move on now. Basic strategy, guys. And again, I'm using a sample strategy. I like to use the 30 EMA, uh, 60 smooth and 120 smooth EMA. There's lots and lots of different ways. Some people will use an 18. Some people will use a, a 28, I think is another common one. Um, some people will use it specifically for long only in stocks, a bit like Darvis box theory, which is something um, what we talked about in the trading room uh, yesterday. Um, so, generally speaking, 
30, 60, and 120 smooth um, EMA. If we pop to a chart, here's an example, guys. It's one from the end of May. It's a pretty good example that we see in the New Zealand dollar there. Okay, and for this one, we're going to be using an hourly chart just to show you, you know, that we can use it on multiple time frames. Okay, so um, first thing you need to do when you come to the chart, guys, very, very simple, is add your moving averages. Now, you can use whatever color you like on the chart. It's absolutely up to you. You'll see that I've used a red for the 120. You'll see that I've used a blue for the 60, which is the mid moving average. And then your signal line, which basically determines when you enter the trade, um, I've used a nice green for a nice peppermint green. Okay, so red basically, um, a bit like traffic lights, but with a blue in the middle there, guys. So we're going to be using this on an hourly, as I've said, and we're going to be looking to see if we can, um, um, what happens with this particular example. So first thing you do, guys, you pop your moving onto the chart. It's very, very important that we pop the moving averages onto the chart um, before we do anything else, because otherwise we won't have a trade signal. Um, the second step uh, for me um, is to actually add uh, an oscillator. So we'll use relative strength index. It's the first and foremost, the sort of... Um, oscillator that I've always used. I've used it for my eight years of trading professionally, guys, and institutionally. And for me, it's just the simplest, the most effective one. Okay, I use it in a lot of my strategies. I use it in a lot of my trading. It gives me a very, very good insight into um, the market itself. So I'm very, very happy to, to, to use that RSI. Um, we also need to make sure that we set the parameters. A standard 14 is absolutely fine, but some people will use a, a 20 MA and it's very important that we actually add a 50 level to the RSI. And the reason we want to add a 50 to the RSI is because this 50 level is a bit of a discretionary add-on that we can use when it comes to, to trading with this um, with this potential system. So if we move back to the chart and have a look at the sort of next slide, uh, get into there, guys, so we can see what's happening. Okay. As I've said, basic strategy. Um, is to look for um, uh, an established breakout or something to occur before we begin to, to trade. And then once the established trend is in place, we're looking for a pullback. Now, the important thing about this um, strategy is we're not looking to enter into a trade um, as soon as we have a cross of our three moving averages or we move below those moving averages. That's not what, what we're looking to do. We're looking for the market to break out and we're looking for that market to have a pullback. And the reason we want it to have the pullback is because, as you know, guys, when a market trends, it generally trends, um, you know, and then hits a consolidation period. If we actually look at the New Zealand dollar and we look at that on a weekly trade, you can see quite clearly, in fact, that's looking a daily. You know, when a market trades, it pulls down, pulls back, enters lower, we continue to back. And then, you know, in this case, we obviously move higher. But again, we move up, we pull back, we consolidate for a while. Then we continue to move higher. So a trend will never move in a straight in a straight line. And this is the reason why um, we're waiting for a pullback to occur and we're waiting for the breakout to occur. Very important that we actually have an established breakout before we um, enter into the into the trade. So any questions so far, guys? Everyone understand? Everyone happy? And again, Lalit, as you can see, we use an hour here. I generally use a half hour hourly chart to, to trade. I don't generally use um much else other than that. Everyone happy? Okay, so let's crack on, shall we? And pop back onto the chart. So um, when we have a little look at sort of what we need to do, the basic strategy entails um, that market should be below 50 when we're looking for a short trade, and it should be above 50 when we're looking for a long trade. Okay, this denotes that the market is basically in a, a little bit of a trend um, one way or the other, okay? And basically what we're looking for is we're looking for sort of ideally, you know, price to be around that 50 level, but knowing what we know about RSI and the fact that the average ceiling and average floor can be, um, you know, between sort of that sort of 15 level and that 85 level, too worried um, if, you know, we are a little bit lower. In this particular example, guys, we can see the New Zealand dollar that moves down. OK, we can see that we established a bit of a breakout already in the market. And what that does is it means that we can look for a pullback and we can um, look for an entry level to to obviously get involved in, into this trade. So as we move along, guys, price moves into an established trend again. If there is a support level in the way, it's very important that we um, we get a push 
down towards sort of that support and we break below it. Now, um, we will go into this in more detail, but, you know, generally we want to see a nice breakout from a support or resistance level. Again, if a market range and very important that we sort of get a, a continuation coming through in the chart. So um, in response to your question, um, Lalit, the ATR generally will be um, a 20. OK, the reason I use a 20 is there are 20 trading days in a month. And I think looking at a month's data is OK. And I like to look at recency um, when I'm looking at, at volatility in a market. The reason I like to look at uh, recency is because I need to make sure that, you know, I'm not looking at candles from 2003 when maybe the market wasn't moving around too much. So very, very important, as I say, that the RSI um, stays below that 50 level. In the example that we have here, we can see that we've moved below the 50 level. But guys, can you see, can, would you say that we're in an established trend at this point? Based on uh, maybe two levels that I'm going to mark out, what do you think this market condition is in this uh, New Zealand dollar? Would you say we're ranging or trending? Lalit, FX Boyke, Milan, maybe one of you guys want to jump in. Lawrence, Juan, anyone at all, guys? Would you say we're in a ranging or trend? Trend is slightly down, absolutely, Lalit. Um, Boyke, you're absolutely right as well. We have a slight down bias because obviously we failed to make a higher high at this point, but we are in a range in the market. So basically, knowing that this is a trending strategy, guys, do you think that we should use um, um, a pullback right now? Or do you think that maybe we should wait for a breakout of a level um, below that 85, sort of 27 level that we have there? Actually, it's probably around 85 or 25. Oh, excuse me. There we go. What do you think? Patience, or do we just jump in, wait for pullback? Absolutely, FX Boyke. Anyone disagree with FX Boyke? I completely agree with you, FX Boyke. It is um, very, very important that we uh, wait for an established uh, trend, because at the moment, there is a chance that we'll, we'll be moving in and out of these moving averages. The moving averages themselves might not cross, but it's very, very dangerous to be, to be trading range. So you wait, basically, for an established trend to take place. Now, I am going to put the ATR onto the chart because we are going to potentially be use that, using this. And it is one of the discretionary factors um, that we can use in trading. You can see that this present here, the average true range is about 11 pips on an hourly, so a very small range. So as we kick on through, guys, we can see that we're still waiting for this purple level to break. And you can see that we get a very nice breakout here, um, sort of as Europe comes into play around sort of 8 o'clock, uh, 9 o'clock um, in the morning. And we break out. So when you get that breakout signal, guys, it means that you can now start looking um, for an entry level. And it's very, very simple, guys. Um, how are we going to be looking for that entry level? It's not difficult at all. We're basically going to be looking for a pullback into this area of the chart. We're looking for a pullback into and a close between the um, blue line, which is our fast line, and our medium line. At the same time, um, we want to have the fast and the slow moving averages um, all aligned as well. That's very, very important, guys. Um, but again, um, some traders do just like to use it for the pullback and they like to use the gap just for their trade management. So we're looking basically now for a pullback into this range. We want to make sure that the fast moving average has covered both the mid and the slow at the very least, and that the mid has moved below that slow if possible. Again, not imperative. The main one is to have the fast moving average across the three when I've tested this strategy, guys. Generally, it, this, this is all you kind of need. Now, when we see a pullback into this sort of range, guys, there are a number of things that you can use. Now, the standard um, sort of mechanical strategy and the way of doing this, and anyone who's attended before will know that I'm not a big fan of mechanical uh, strategies, um, will basically see that, you know, what I'm interested in is actually seeing some sort of reversal and some sort of volume in the market. So what I like to do in this example, we can see that we have a pullback and then we get a nice doji. OK, when we pull back into the range, look to see if there's a reversal, you know, maybe a, a tweezer top, maybe an engulfing pattern. You know, it could even be um, a head and shoulders if, if there's something developed. Lots and lots of different patterns you can use for. It's not a necessity, but it helps to indicate that at some point when we are between this blue and this green line, we are going to reverse and we're going to move lower. In this example, we have a nice doji. It is from March. Again, it's the Kiwi. And we can see that, you know, a nice doji with some supporting volume. The volume is higher than at least the prior two candles, which indicates that there is um, either a large responsive buyer 
or there's maybe even an initiative seller, uh, responsive seller, sorry, or initiative seller coming into the market. And so, you know, volume should combine ideally with price action. If we pop back to our chart and look at the example that we have here, you know, we're now waiting for price to move back into our range. And we can see that price moves down. And again, notice how, guys, the trend actually begins to establish itself before we get our pullback. And again, that's to do with the fact that moving average is generally lag. So um, with the tunneling, you will see a little bit of a lag. So we begin to and at this point, you know, we begin to consolidate. Uh, quite an interesting one for us is we can see that we've also got a little bit of a uh, sort of resistance level at this point on the chart. Now, um, a rejection of this resistance level while we are between this blue and this green line would be very, very interesting and, and add a little bit of conviction to trading. What do you think, guys? Ah, well, you'll see the ATR in a second. Um, FX Boyke. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, generally, though, um, without sort of ruining uh, things, one of the things I use the average true range for is seeing if um, a breakout has um, pretty much occurred and we we, we want to see that ATR potentially ticking up. We also want to see sort of the range of the candle. We can see the candle here, obviously a big candle, 45 pips. The average true range itself on that candle um, at that point is 13 pips. Okay, so generally speaking, when we break out from a level, okay, the average true range, and this was one of the things I was going to talk about regarding optimizing entry at the end, but we can talk about it now, um, is, you know, we want to see a break by at least one average true range of our support or resistance level. Um, you can say that you want the candle to be um, at least, you know, one times the ATR, but for me, you know, when we see a breakout, it's good to have a breakout with a nice solid candle. And as I say, if it's more than one average true range, that's a big positive because it in indicates that you've got big momentum pushing down. If we look at volume as well on the breakout, again, we want to check that volume on the breakout maybe is good. And again, this is all just discretionary stuff that you can bring in, but very important. You know, volume there, massive volume higher than sort of anything um, up until the prior day. So, you know, big, big, big volume there. So we know that that's a breakout because of the fact that it's broken the average true range quite considerably. We've got a nice red candle and we've got volume. So does that answer your um, question? Can we take green MA as the stop loss? Uh, you can do. We're going to talk about how I use it. We can use whatever um, method you like, um, but we will talk about that in a minute, Lalit. And again, remember, guys, I give you sort of the base strategy. This is how I use things. You know, we've got a good exercise at Tradimo um, when we're in our trading room, basically showing you why each trader is different, even using a mechanical strategy um, because of the way they apply that. It's a very good exercise that we do. Maybe we'll take part in one of those exercises um, in one of our upcoming sessions on FX3. So we can see that basically a pullback has occurred. If that pull goes around a nice support or resistance level, then that's good. You can see we've got a bit of a bearish consolidation range. And the goal here is we're looking for a pullback like a catapult and we're looking for the market to continue down. So once we pull back into the green area, guys, we're now waiting for price to break and close back below the uh, green area. Now, the longer that we're within this range, the more likely it is that we are going to start ranging. Well. So generally, we don't like to be in this in this sort of area for too long. So popping back to the slideshow and having a little example here, you can see we're very short term in the area. There is a little bit of a resistance level, as I've mentioned. We break by more than the average true range. Definitely the average true range at this point is around sort of seven, eight pips. The breakout, obviously, um, from this level, more than that seven, eight pips. Again, that's another reason we use average true range. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and as we move on now, we're looking to see how we enter into the trade. So when it comes to entry, guys, number of methods you can use. Uh, the most common method for this um, is to basically wait until we break below the uh, moving average. And um, the reason we want to break below the moving average um, is because, as you know, moving average can be a resistance for support. So we're looking for that break back down. As I say, if there is a resistance or a support level, that's pretty good because, you know, in this example, we've got a nice resistance. And again, we're looking for a big close below that moving average. And as I say, the shorter we're in the uh, moving average, the faster and the medium, the better generally with this, guys. So as we can see, um, we get the pullback. We get an entry signal here, guys. Again, we want to check to make sure that the uh, RSI is below 50 optimally. Um, 
you know, volume isn't so important when we break back below the moving average because um, generally most people will look at volume for support and resistance levels. But, you know, it helps if you have got strong volume. We can see that in this equal here, our average true range is 12 pips. And we want to check to make sure that we've broken out by 12 pips or more. Yeah, we've broken out by about 12 or 13, 14 pips. So we've broken back down. Now, at this point, guys, it's very, very simple. We look to enter into a trade. OK, I'll mark this up in a nice, oh, excuse me, I'll mark this up in a nice orange for us so you can see I'll make it a little bit thicker. OK, so the entry level takes place when we break back below. Now, the idea here is we might to and fro between the fast moving average and mid moving average. But because the mid moving average is lagging, because it's sort of around two times the, the fast moving average, so this is around 30, this is around, um, sorry, 60, this is around 30. If we were to trade all the way back up to this mid moving average, it would indicate that we're no longer in a downtrend, wouldn't it, guys? Everyone agree with that? Everyone think that um, that's correct? Everyone happy with that? Good, 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 good. Again, if you've got any questions, please pop them into the box. So um, we get the sort of a breakout level here. OK, we're looking to enter. So popping back to the slide show, let's have a look at how this goes. OK, as I've said, ATR is optional, but it's something that I do like to use for volatility purposes. OK, one times average true range below the fast moving average is generally something I like to use. I like to see a nice big solid candle. Um, you know, if you get a, a doji and you're followed by a hammer page, you know, we could be moving mm. higher. So generally, if you can get a nice break below the moving average, um, it's uh, pretty important that we um, we look to 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 maybe be a, um, a little bit patient if, as I say, we get a rejection and a rejection. If you get that big volume and bit and big sort of red candle, it means you can enter into the trade. So when it comes to placing um, your stop loss, um, again, you've asked a question, Lalek. Can we use the um, sort of lower line here for our stop loss? Uh, in general, I don't like to use that. The reason I don't like to use that is quite often. Um, the market will at some point, especially if you're in a consolidation pattern with this sort of S shape that we have here, it will pop back into um, the moving average. So for me, the stop loss is generally placed, you know, and again, you can use a little bit of discretion, but we use the mid moving average for the stop loss. I do know people who hold trades for longer term who do use the higher one, but this one here, this mo middle moving average is 60 um, smooth moving average that we have, you know, comes in as our stop loss level. Now, in terms of what I've said, you know, again, we don't want to pop it on the moving average because as we know, moving average can be a resistance level. Um, and because there's a resistance level doesn't mean we're not going to break through it. So we could touch through that. So generally speaking, as a rule, you have a number of things open to you. OK, if you're trading on a sort of a 30 minute or a one hour chart, 10 pips above um, the moving average is generally fair. You know, if something like New Zealand dollar, you have a choice of using one time the average true range, which is my favorite method. So 12 pips there. So we can see, you know, moving average around 33. We look for around that 45 handle. OK, and the idea is just in case we break back up, we don't want to get stopped out if the market comes back down. OK, but again, experiment, guys, see what works for you. If you're using a five minute chart, obviously, you're probably going to only have sort of maybe a four or five pip. Um, stop above the moving average or again use average true range guys you know something that you can use in the market to to sort of just you know take um that strategy and make it a little bit more mechanical rather than maybe um you know deciding that well i usually put it at five pips this time i'm going to put it up here you know if you always stick to the average true range it's a mechanical side of the, the strategy so um showing the stop sl slide for you there fx boyki there we go. Let's just pop that back up. There you go. And I will make the slide deck available for anyone um, that wants to use it. So does that answer your question, Lalit? You know, in New Zealand dollar, generally, you'll find if we're not in a heavy trend, anywhere between a seven um, and a 15 pip stop uh, above the average, uh, above, sorry, the, the middle moving average with that 30 minute and one hour chart, sort of maybe around seven on the 30 minute, maybe eight, nine, 10, if it's a bit more volatile, generally around sort of 10, 15 on the one hour chart will be the sort of which that you get with that, um, with a range using the ATR. Unless, of course, we're in, a, we're in a heavy, heavy trend. So, okay, to move on, FX Boyki. 
because I'm going to crack on now. Okay, so once we've got our stop loss in place and once we've got a uh, uh, trade in place, guys, okay, it's very, very simple. Um, what we can do is move on to trade management. Okay, we have the trade on, we've entered into the trade. In this example, you can see that we break out of our black line, we move down, we get a pullback. Okay, now when it comes to managing the trade, very, very simple, just track the middle moving average. That's what I like to do generally here, guys, just tracking it down. Again, using that average true range. Again, if the average true range increases, okay, um, it's very important that you don't move your stop loss against the trend because you don't want to increase your money management or your risk percentage. But, you know, generally it won't occur too much, guys. So, you know, you generally should have an okay um, time of if you've got to move it up a little bit, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, if, you, if your stop loss suddenly moves up to here, you know, and your original stop loss was at this level, you shouldn't be doing that, guys. Um, but that shouldn't happen with moving average trails with the trend and using sort of a decent level, sort of around a 30, maybe even sort of a 26, maybe even a 50 if you're longer term. Okay, should ensure that you at least get some movement um, in the market. Now, when it comes to um, managing the trade, okay, there's a number of ways that, again, you can look to manage the trade. You can use your RSI. And again, um, it's just a discretionary aspect that I've bought into things. You know, looking at a little bit of price action, looking a little bit at the RSI, the ATI, and the volume. Okay, we're in our trade. We move down nicely. So at this point, we can see that the average true range um, is around 12, 13 pip. So again, move an average. Seen at 32, so we move it down slightly. Okay, but what you can do is just keep an eye on your RSI. We're below 50, which is good. Okay, now if the market starts to move and the RSI begins to heavily move down and again remember we're always tracking our stop loss for argument's sake i'll just make sure that basically we um we're just tracking it just so you can see the example if the rsi begins to move towards that 30 level don't be afraid to take a little bit of profit i find in my experience that the majority of my trades are scale out of okay how many of you guys um only ever have one take profit or or get out of a trade all at once or how many of you um, like to scale out of a trade. We talked about scaling in and scaling out in one of our sessions. Uh, Varath likes to get out once. What about you, uh, Bojan, Dean, FX Boyke, David G? Jonathan likes to get out all at once. Well, for me, I like to get out more than once. I like to sort of um, scale out of the trade. The reason I like to scale out of the trade is because I want to make sure that I'm basically... Um, I'm, I'm giving the trade enough time to run, but I'm also locking in a little bit of profit because the amount of times that a trade goes on side for me and I got stopped out, uh, I couldn't tell you guys in the past how often that happens. So, you know, what I generally look at is I look at the 30 area. Now, there's a little uh, little bit of a tip for you. Those of you who know me um, and have seen me in the past, let's pop up another um, market. Let's pop, pop up this Aussie. When a market is trending with the RSI, I generally don't like to use the 30 level or the 70 level as the... OK, what I like to do is I like to take the average over sort of the last um, maybe 100, uh, 200 um, daily candles. You know, it can be the last month. Um, generally for me, though, I like to scroll back over the chart and find where the average floor is. In a ranging market, the 30 is absolutely fine. You know, we generally bounce off the 30 level or 70 level. But when a market enters into a trend or it sees a big spike in volatility, you'll notice that we, we more often than not break down. So what you can do is you can find an average floor or an average ceiling just by trying to line up an average area. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just the rough area that you need. And you can see in this example, in a trending market, sort of, or in a market where we see heightened volatility for a period of time, you can see the average floor is around 17. And you can see in this market that the average ceiling, we fail to break that average ceiling going back a little bit, probably comes in around this 83 level. Okay, so you can mark this up on to your um, moving average at the area. And you can do one or two things. You can look to scale out around the 30, and then you can look to scale out around the low. Now, in this example, you know, the average is generally in most uh, currency pairs between 15 and 17. We just mark this up here. So as we move along, the stop loss continues to move down. And you'll notice that we bring ourselves back to a break even point. OK, guys, have you noticed that? Now, this is why, Lalit, it's very important that generally 
you make sure that you trail your stop loss um, probably around the middle or the back end. The reason we like to do that is because, again, we can see we would have been stopped out otherwise, okay, with this example potentially. However, you would have also maybe been in a little bit of profit. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, well, I like to give a trade a chance to breathe. So we see that we pull back here, we move along, okay, and it's very, very simple, guys. We're going to exit the trade, and again, looking at our average true range, all about 14 pips, moving average at 20, so around 34. There you go. Okay. You can see we've popped back into the range, and again, we're maybe a little bit concerned. Again, though, we've got our resistance level that's held up. We begin to break back down. We know we're in established bear trend, so we're happy to hold the trade. And we continue to hold it. We continue to move our um, stop loss. Average true range hanging around to about 13 there, 14, which is probably around sort of the 27, 28 area. Okay. And again, just keeping an eye on that RSI. If it hits down to that 30 level, we will look to probably um, get out of some of the trade at least. So we begin to move down. Um, we can see we have got a little bit of a support level. Again, don't be afraid to take a little bit of a profit if there is a key bottom or a key support level forming. But in this point, we're looking okay. We're moving back down. And again, making sure that the stop loss stays within our average true range, which is now around 10 pips. So um, 03 goes up to sort of around 13. And the idea is the moving average will move very slowly, but as we begin to accelerate, we should see a bit of a spike down. Again, RSI is moving down gradually. And we sort of, we touch the 30 level here, guys. Can you see that? We touch the 30. So what I like to do is when we hit that 30 level, especially if the market is struggling, to, to break lower and make that lower low is I'll generally look to take a little bit of profit. In this example, you know, we could look to lock in a little bit of profit around this area. Maybe lock in, you know, you can lock in half the trade up to you. Again, generally I like to take half the trade off um, when I exit from the trade. So, you know, that's a nice 50 pip profit. We've got half the trade on now. And then we continue to just track the stop loss. So we'll continue moving this along. And again, looking at our average true range, that's now 11 pips. So let's have a look. 49, 84, 92, sorry. So around 82, we move along. We begin to move up. And again, just tracking that stop loss. And then as we move down, you can see we don't quite break the 30 level, but we do have a breakout of a level that indicates some continuation. So again, ATR hanging around 12. We can see we've got the moving average around the sort of 85 mark. Our stop loss should probably um, be around where it is now. So we'll leave it there. And you can see the uh, moving average now begins to move down. And again, you know, we could be looking for... Um, a pullback towards the 30 level. If we bounce and we hit that 30 and we are lower, we could look to exit the trade or some of the trade again. Oh, excuse me. Wrong one. There we go. So move an average at 76. Average true range again around 12, so 88. So we're around a break even at this point. We begin to move down and we hit the 30 level again. At this point, you know, you haven't got to get out. If there's a big red candle, around that 30 level. You haven't got to look to exit because that shows momentum with volume, but we can see that volume is quite high here and we have a little bit of a hammer. So for me, you know, again, probably look to exit a little bit more um, of my trade. So in this example, probably look to exit, I don't know, maybe another 25% at this point. And again, it depends how long you want to hold the trade. I like to get in and get out myself. Um, so at this point, you know, Currently, the trade is about 70 pips on side. We have a little bit of a bounce. We begin to move higher. And again, making sure that we track the moving average. Average through range around 11 pips. 84.67. So the stop is around the 77 level. And again, this is why I like to use the RSI though myself. Um, and as we move down, let's speed this up a little bit. You can see that gradually what will happen is we should get stopped. I haven't checked this example. I've just rounded and picked it. 84.56. Average through range of 10. So 66 is fine. You know, we move along. Again, looking to see what happens. And you can see that we actually get stopped out there. So you can see why it's important to take a bit of profit at this point. You know, if we actually look at our out 55 average true range, uh, probably around 10 pips. So 65 is absolutely fine. 
you can see that on the whole trade, if we've got out of that, that 20 pips, but we've got as much as 80 pips on side. So that's why I like to scale up, guys. Um, again, if we move through the 30 level and go straight down to this 15, I look to exit from the trade. So that's it. You get stopped out. That's exactly how we manage the trade, guys. Okay. So again, if the RSI breaks a 30 and a 70 and a reversal appears, you can take profit earlier. In this example, we see we move down. Okay. We see that... Um, at this level, we get a big hammer, big volume. The RE um, bounces towards that 30 level. You know, we can exit. Another way you can do this, guys, another way of doing things is if the uh, RSI breaks the 30 or 70 level, you can, if you want to hold the trade, move it in for a break even if you're not already at a break even point. Um, and again, you can exit the whole trade if we have, if we get out of that, um, if we get out um, around that sort of average ceiling or floor. So um, FX Boyke, what are 50% and 25%? That's the trade that you you might take off. In my example, I take off half a trade. I take off 25%, and then I let 25% run. Does that make sense, FX Boyke? So if I've got a, if I've got a five lot, uh, let's make it easy, a four lot on, I take off two lots, one lot, and then let one lot run. Does that make sense? So whenever you bounce off that, RSI 30 level or that average floor or average ceiling. Okay. That's generally how we manage to trade in this example. You can see um, that the reversal takes part. And again, if you always exit the trade at once, you can do that. Guys. You know, in this example, we make a little bit again. Kiwi seems to be quite well. It's been in a trend a lot recently, so the time has worked quite well. Okay. Now, as well as this, guys, um, you can actually optimize your entry a little bit. Okay. Um, if a support or resistance level, as I say, is positioned around the signal or entry level, you can maybe um, look to take a small one earlier. You can look to scale into a trade. OK, so what I mean by this is in this example here, we can see that we clearly break out um, from this area here on the chart. I think we can all see this. Guys. OK, again, Kiwi dollar. This is from the 10th of June. Another good example where we've been trending. OK, we get a breakout. OK, we move high. So we've established the trend. Everything is aligned. Blue is above the green, above the yellow. Uh, green is above the yellow, below the blue. OK, now at this point, when we start moving up, we're looking for a pullback um, towards the middle area. Now, generally, we would enter a trade at this point here on the chart, guys, when we break out. And you can see again, Lalit, why it's important not to maybe track the the, the lower move at uh, the fast moving average because again we can spend some time consolidating within a range you know the idea is we're trying to pick up this sort of catapult where we boing back like this and then we go higher okay you can see there is actually a little bit of a support level forming on the chart you know we've got a nice maybe head and shoulder forming not necessarily but we have got a consolidation pattern after a trend and there's a bit of a support level forming now, if you want to preempt a move, and this is something that I've been sort of working with um, in the last sort of six months with this strategy, okay, there's no harm in if we're in a clear established trend. Let me ask you a question. We're in a trend here, guys. Anyone who trades tre trend continuation, take the moving average aside, would you look to be buying weakness in a market? That's a very good question, FX Boyke, and I'll answer it in a second if you don't mind. I've got a question for you guys. In a trend continuation, when we hit a consolidation pattern and we hit sort of maybe a symmetrical or ascending triangle, descending triangle rather, or, you know, horizontal support and resistance in a consolidation zone, how many of you look to buy support levels for trend continuation? Jonathan does. Does anyone else? FX Boyke does. What about you, Linda Chang? Lalit, what about you? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're all in agreement. You know, we look to go with the trend. If we, we should be buying support, we should be buying support. It's a fact of life. Um, so with this strategy, and again, it is maybe a little bit for more sort of uh, comfort who you don't mind taking a bit of risk on. You can actually look to try and optimize your entry. And one of the ways to do that is if we have an established trend, we pull back. And there is a support level. You know, we break into a range. We enter into the trade here. You can actually add to that trade a little bit. You can look to scale in with just a little bit more volume 
Okay, now that does mean that you have to stick within your money management parameters. Um, but, you know, another example, if we pull back into the range and we don't get it, so let's pretend that buy signal is not there, but we have a support level, you can enter up to sort of, you know, maybe a quarter of the volume that you're going to trade around that support level. And the stop loss, again, just tracks that middle bar. And the idea is you're trying to bring your entry level down. We can see that at the moment, um, our first entry level would have been around the 86 or sort of 70 handle. But if you can enter into the trade around that 86, probably 50 area or around that 45 at the level, so it's around the 50 area, you're actually, you know, bringing your average down and giving you a little bit of a, a chance to maybe optimize your position. Um, so it is something you can toy with. In this example, you can see we get a buy signal here. We would have entered. We pull back. We've got a clear support maybe forming here. We look to buy it. OK. Or again, you can look to buy a little bit more on an exit. And then we begin to move higher, okay, and we begin to track the trade, okay, and at that point, we're probably about, on average, probably around 30, 40 pips on side, okay, guys. So there's a lot that you can do with this strategy. Um, for me, the discretionary side of using, like, the RSI and the ATR is a big, big factor in this. You'll get a lot of guys who use very simple tunneling methods. Um, for me, they don't, they don't work. You know, I like to see a breakout before it happens. You know, if we actually um, have a little look on the chart, you know, let's have a little look. Let's just pop, um, I don't know. Let's find something. Let's look at dollar Swiss. Probably not the best example. It has been ranging. Uh, in fact, it's over here, isn't it? The dollar Swiss, it has been ranging, so it's not the best example. Let's pop it onto an hour. Again, when a market's ranging, it doesn't work. There you go. We establish a bit of a trend here, guys. Again, things like ADX can be used. So we get a bit of a breakout at this point. We look for a pullback. We get the pullback. We enter the trade. At this point, we pull back down. You can see that we go as much as 60 pips on side. Again, you'd probably take a very small trade. Again, um, something to bear in mind, guys, is if we pull back in to an area on the chart and we ever breach or close above the middle average, you have to wait for price to move back out. Okay, and then back in before you enter a short trade. So with this example, we can see we've, we've got a clear breakout. We enter this trade. We don't breach at all. Okay, we enter, we come down. Okay. On this example, we get a signal to buy, um, to sell. Sorry, we're not established in trend. We break and close above this blue line. Okay, so what we do then is we wait for us to break. We wait for a pullback again. We reset the signal. When we come out of here, we look to sell. But again, we break the lines. We don't have to sell. We pull back. We don't break below the line before we break that. So we don't look to trade. And again, we break the line here. So none of these trades would have been taken. And the reason you use the middle move and average guys in that way, um, I should have maybe explained a bit earlier, is because when a market is ranging, you know, the amount of times that we breach move and averages, okay, very, very big. What do you say if we use a Fibonacci tool by using a higher time frame? I don't see why not. What sort of time frame? Are you thinking about a four-hour time frame? You know, again, we get a good long example in the uh, dollar Swiss here. We gap higher. We pull back in. Nothing. We come out. We pull back in. We enter into the trade. Market continues to move higher. At that point, that's a nice probably 100, 200, 300 pips there on the four-hour. Day one or H4. Yeah, we could do that. Are you thinking that maybe we use swing highs and lows? Something like, you know, this. And we look to maybe use these levels for breakouts. Or are you thinking we use them around the middle of the range? What are you thinking? And at this point, much at the end of the session. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, put them into the chat box. My question says FX Boyke. And just check this now. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking what how are we going to use the Fibonacci? Are we using it for levels to enter? So you know we look to buy it here, or are you thinking, you know, we wait for a break of the Fibonacci before we enter? Do I have an advisor at the moment? Um, this isn't EA, and the reason it's not EA is um, I use discretion with all of my systems. I've had a whole host of EAs, guys. Um, I did a coaching on my BVI strategy, averaged about ninety percent over eight years. Okay, I know for a fact that trading it on my own 
discretionary and not taking trades that go against things like news, you know, when there's a fundamental out or there's a specific high momentum in market sentiment. I know for a fact that I won't take a certain trade. Now, if the market is heavily trending, I won't necessarily take a reversal, things like this. So um, you can look to EA this, absolutely. But again, there is a certain amount of discretion that, that most systems that I trade work best with. But again, look to implement an EA and see how it goes. So FX Boyke has a question above. Do, 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 do. How do you handle economic... Ah, sorry, FX Boyke, clean forgot. Um, how do you handle it? Generally, it's very important that, you know, over economic news, you, you probably don't implement this strategy necessarily unless you see a breakout. So if a piece of news comes out and we get a big breakout, okay, say that, let's say, I don't know, non-farm payrolls is better here, okay, not necessarily the case, but let's just say, okay, if it breaks a level and it looks like the market is, you know, give it maybe, um, half an hour after the news event, if it looks like we are going to have a sustained move, then you can look for trade. But ever, in my experience, I never hold trades into news um, unless they are absolutely miles on side. And the reason I do that, guys, is very, very simple. Okay, if I have to worry about a trade that I haven't already, okay, it means I can't trade the news itself and I can't take advantage of the news. For example, the minutes today, they mentioned the 2014 hike, a little bit more hawkish. I thought, they've never mentioned that before, I'm going to buy some cable. If I'd been short cable into that, I'd be too busy scrambling around trying to get out of that trade and I'd be missing a profitable opportunity. So does that answer your question, FX Boyke? Good, 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 good. So, guys, um, we're pretty much at the end of the session again. Any more questions or anything? OK, in that case, um, I'd like to thank you all for attending. I'd like to thank FX Street for, for um, hosting uh, our webinar. I will be back on the 30th, uh, guys. Um, it has been uh, bought in conjunction with Tradimo, uh, learning education site. Lots of um, education available on here, guys, um, completely free. Your brokers will um, allocate your Tradimo points if you are, are, are trading track through us we have um, a lot of lot of weekly schedule in our live trading class you guys got to learn live trading lots of uh, mentoring going on there about 25 hours a week um again uh, mainly me in there this week because most of the guys are on holiday but just swing by tradimo guys come and say hello to the community we have a very very lovely community here everyone helps each other out lots and lots of discussions there's a good one going on about oil at the moment we've got lots of free content for you guys to use. so make sure you attend OK, if any of you do want the slide deck or if any of you do want to um, speak to me, um, my Skype is attached. Again, feel free to add me um, on Skype if any of you want to discuss anything we, we, we've talked about in our sessions. And again, if you have any emails, if you'd like the slide deck again, just forward me um, an email and I'll, I'll make sure I push it to you in a, in a form that you can view. Okay, guys, so thanks ever so much for attending. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Bye-bye now.